this is kind of like a little bit of a <clears throat> journal of my trip. Just basically will say kind of what I did and reflect a little bit upon some of the things I was feeling. But like, you know, I did a lot of preparation for this trip. I've been thinking about it for a while. I kind of had the impulse to do it back in November. Now it's in May when I finally leave. Maybe it's even October, September, October, November. But Southeast Asia has been kind of speaking to me, calling to me, because I got into Buddhism and Thailand. There's a lot of Buddhism in Thailand. And I uh, just learned today that Thailand, Thai means free, freedom. So it's a land of freedom, Thailand. And that's kind of cool because I see Buddhism as the path to freedom. We, last couple of weeks, they just flew by, man. I was trying to get my book finished and get it online before I left because my goal was to have, have it up. And uh, so just trying to make that happen and finishing the editing and, and getting it, you know, onto the Create Space publishing thing and, and then finishing up my grading at school, at work. I was at work until 11 o'clock. What day did I leave? Wednesday, Tuesday night. I was at work until 11 o'clock. And then, um, you know, get my grades in. And, and then I left and I went home and I packed till 3 in the morning. I went to bed and I woke up at 5.30 in the morning and my dad picked me up at 6 and we got my dogs in the back of his car and we drove my dogs to uh, my ex's house, Melissa's house, and we dropped my dogs off and I'm feeling kind of like jagged, a little bit ragged, you know, <laughs> like just from not getting enough sleep and kind of being stressed and trying to get all this stuff done before I go. So I'm kind of already afraid, you know, like, you know, not in a normal mind state because I didn't get enough sleep and I'm just busy and jagged out a little bit from being sleepless and dropped the dogs off at Melissa's and then knowing I'm not going to see my dogs for almost two months saying goodbye to them. I get in the car with my dad and I'm just crying. I'm like, why am I going on this trip? I don't want to leave my dogs. I'm not going to see my dogs. And so like I grab uh, the van back to the airport and get some good good food and I walk around the airport looking for free Wi-Fi and find none and then I see these uh, two guys down at the end of this one walkway Miguel and Pablo and uh, I, uh, I figure out oh, you know I'm just gonna meditate they're just like crashed out on the floor sleeping they look like grungy derelicts <laughs> One guy's got a kind of a half-shaved head with dreads coming out the other half. Another guy looks pretty, you know, it's like a young, normal kid. And so I meditate there next to him while they're snoozing. I get up and I'm looking at him and I'm like, man, you guys look like the kings of chill. You look like you've got like relaxing down to an art form. And so and they're like, let's start talking to them. And I start talking to them about meditating. They're interested in what I'm doing. And, and then they start telling me about their trips and how they've been on the road for six months and uh, just living by their wits by any means necessary. Well, no, not any means necessary. They actually had a lot of integrity. At one point, some guy hired them to pick mangoes and then never paid them. And so they went back to collect pay, but the guy wasn't there, so they took their pay in mangoes and left him a note saying, since you weren't here, we took our pay in mangoes. They had the integrity to leave it out. But, uh, you know, they just told me stories about their adventures being on the road for six months. They're 20 years old and, uh, you know, uh, having to improvise and sleeping in a, a little van they purchased and different little odd jobs they were and not worrying about mosquitoes, you know, and just sleeping on the dirt or sleeping outside on the ground, you know, at some place or wherever they parked. And, and then uh, we went and had a little food, and then it was, you know, close to uh, only a couple more hours till Rich got there. So I decided to hang out the entire time until Rich got there. So it turned out to be, uh, turned out to be pretty good. But then Rich, you know, like talking with Miguel and Pablo, I liked that. 
and because uh, it was kind of like I got from them. It's kind of like we were meant to run into each other or something, you know, like sometimes the, the universe or the collective unconscious, like, it draws you to where you need to be. Because uh, I got from them some reassurance that, you know, this world, we're made to be in this world, I'm made to be in this world, and, and uh, they've had a great adventure, a great time, and, you know, they just kind of lived, you know, in the dirt, lived simply, so at some points they were getting food that the uh, grocers threw out out of the dumpster, you know, because it expired the day before. I'm like, wow, these hot dogs were good yesterday, probably still good today, <laughs> living that way, you know, and so just getting kind of a sense of reassurance that, yeah, you know, it could be, I'll be okay in this world, and it seemed like it was really nice for them to be able to have somebody interested in their trip and share their stories and they're flying back, you know, that day to Spain, and they have somebody to uh, sort of like, you know, give, you know, for them to be able to use me as a sounding board and just to share all their adventures and what they've been through. It seemed like it was good for them too. And I get in the hotel and I'm like, you know, how far are we from the protests, you know, where they're shooting people? And, uh, and they're like, no, it's, it's a ways, you know. And like a couple of locks, a couple of miles. And, and I'm not still even clear like how far away I am from it. But, uh, but uh, I asked, you know, the cab driver start when I was coming, are you know, things going up or is it getting worse or is it getting better? He said, it's getting a little better. morning waking up and having that deluxe breakfast and going to the flower market and the Grand Temple. That was like, um, I was like over the moon, dude. <laughs> having Sam and like, you know, all this good food and, you know, friendly, personally me and a couple other people around and talking to us and showing us things and, and other people. It was just like, I was over the moon just kind of like, this is great. And it's kind of like it went from this thing where it was like, uh, and uh, this is real kind of low with the fear, or just the fear, I don't know if you need to say it's low, but just the fear to this like really sort of like, yeah, feeling excited and happy and enjoying it and having a pretty good, having a real good time today. You know, a lot of pretty good time, a really good time. But it's uh, the land of freedom, land of smiles, and it's unfortunate they're going through a little bit of a hard time. But it's a beautiful country and beautiful people, and, and uh, I'm looking forward to the rest of my journey, the rest of this trip, to see what else I'm going to learn. Thanks for tuning in.